You are listening to a new episode of the Game Inflators Podcast. My name is John, and I'm joined by Ryan. Hey, everybody here at the Game Inflators Podcast this week. We're looking at three of the worst SNES games in this week's Triple Threat Throwdown. I keep wanting to say triple threat showdown, so I'm surprised that you're able to like hold on to that throwdown component. I'm I'm trying to keep the the triple T rolling. Yeah, this is a a new format we're trying out where we're going to take three of a thing. It can be any disparate thing. We're going to throw them head to head and decide what is the best and what is the worst. And then on top of that, they're going to be on a little Mario podium mm -hmm. and uh, crack some champagne for the loser. Well, in this case. I don't know what they're going to crack open. That's not going to be champagne because <laughs> they're terrible. Uh, but we looked at three games on the SNES. We really tried to pull the three worst games on the console. Honestly, I, they were really bad. But uh, we played Batman Forever, which was a port, essentially. I'm pretty sure this was a port. Uh, Space Ace, which was definitely a port. Uh, and then also Revolution X, also a port. So, and maybe not we port. should have been more specific. Maybe it's the three worst N SNES ports. Yeah, it is a uh, Batman a port. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it is. It was definitely on multiple consoles. We don't know which one came first. Yeah, I guess definitely it's the chicken or the egg with Batman Forever. You never know. Uh, but yeah, they were all pretty bad. Uh, we'll dive into each of these separately. But you know, just a really quick thing. It, you know, I've played a lot of bad games in my life. These are these are up there in some of the worst games I've ever played and. I actually kind of had some fun with it because it was good times. I mean, we we really got to sit back and, you know, just joke about it as we were playing like yeah. some of the really terrible components of each of these games. But we'll start off with uh, the first game here. It is in no particular order right now. We'll decide that at the end of the episode. But um, Batman Forever. Hold on. Yeah, that's about it. That's, <laughs> that's really what it kind of comes down to. Batman Forever has this ridiculous loading screen where it just says, hold on. And then it like you <laughs> hold on, you're like, okay, wait for a minute. It's so <laughs> funny. Like every time it came up, it was just hold on. It, it reminded me of that like TikTok video I keep seeing of like Steve Harvey's like Holy Spirit activate, but she's like, hold on. I haven't seen that. You haven't seen it, dude. It's crazy. So um, I'll go first really quick. I got some short notes here, but uh, horrible controls, uh, cheesy music, and then the one pause is that graphically, it looks good. But it's also trashy at the same time. Like, it's got that cinematic type of graphic style, which... So, they used motion capture to animate digital sprites, like they did in Mortal Kombat. But just not as good. Just not as good. And the, I think one of the biggest issues is um, the backgrounds and stuff in this, and the levels aren't super... I don't know they're not super interesting and everything just doesn't look super great so when you see these like higher quality like sprites they tried to put in there it just doesn't really mesh well like it doesn't feel as cohesive as you would like it to feel yeah and then like you know going into the controls aspect it just was it just wasn't good it wasn't it didn't feel like a solid game as you're playing it like if you're trying to punch or kick or do anything it just didn't feel like it was matching up to me. You know, it felt like there was some sort of input delay, which was random. Um, I don't know if you got that. I know we did play this on uh, the Retron, which, but we've never had that issue yeah. with any game that we've played, right? This one just kind of felt weird and didn't feel right while playing. And then, like, if we want to go up to, like, using our, um, our hook, hooks yeah, and our stuff. grappling yeah, hooks that and was stuff, weird. it was a pain in the ass. Like, you had to be in an exact spot to use your grappling hook. And, like, you couldn't go down unless you were in the exact spot. And the same to go up. Like, mm -hmm. it was just horrible uh, with that. And um, I, not a lot of in-game cues on really how to do things. Mm -hmm. um, I will say one thing that was very weird with the control. So this is sort of like a pretty standard side-scrolling beat-em-up. But, like, the amount of different moves that you had through like directional and button combo inputs like it just seemed like there was a lot of different types of hits that you could do and a lot of different animations so like that was kind of cool but all pretty pointless like for the most part i had like one attack that had more reach than the others and 
it didn't seem like any attack was particularly stronger or different than any others. So while interesting to be able to mix things up, it's kind of why. You know, it yeah. seems like a game where you're going to wind up spamming the same thing over and over again. Uh, it gives you a choice to like choose the equipment setup that you have for the level. But for the most part, I don't think that we really even understood how to use those or what they even would do once we used them. And we both had independent items that we could get. Like, we didn't have the same options either. Yeah, and we couldn't use them for some reason. It was really odd. Um, you know, this this particular movie that this is based on, isn't this one of the worst Batman movies out there? This particular one, like with Robin and all? I want to yeah, say it is. I mean, people, people aren't super into... These Batmans, I don't know. I I like most Batman media, so I don't have a problem with them. And I mean, Jim Carrey is always fun. I think one issue with this uh, game in particular was I don't think that they really used much from there. You know, like back in the day, tie-in games were like they'd have the same title and they come out like around the same time, but it's not like you're really going through the plot of the movie, I don't think. No, and, you know, I'm looking it up right now. So Metacritic, not Metacritic, Rotten Tomatoes for the movie of uh, Batman Forever is a 32% on the audience score and a 39 on the uh, tomato meter. So, yeah, it is not exactly a um, fan favorite, for one thing. And I would say that in terms of a game itself, uh, let's, I guess, look into the ratings here. Yeah, so the ratings aren't very good on this one. Um, for the most part, it got, like, ones and twos and then hobby consoles or hobby consolas i don't know who that it's a is spanish video game magazine. yeah they gave it a 90 i think so they had an in <laughs> they they must have played a different game or, or gotten or they were paid. some of that acclaim money yeah something came their way like it's not doing well in the u.s let's make it go to mexico for a release there on the snes yeah so not not great for this one um i think that there's obviously better Batman titles out there. I don't know if there's in particularly better ones for the Super Nintendo, but I'd wager there has to be at least one better Batman game. Yeah. And let's look at the uh, the back end information here. So this was developed by Probe Entertainment, and boy, did they probe a lot of people with this one. Uh, Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment uh, was also a developer. It was published by Acclaim Entertainment. They're probably looking uh, back at that and wishing it didn't. It was designed by Nick Bain. Sorry, Nick, we're trashing your game. Uh, it was released in August of 1995 and is, of course, a beat up with those low reviews. Uh, so, dude, looking at the brass tacks on this game, <laughs> what you laughing at? So, I, I googled best Batman game for SNES and I came across a game facts. I know of three. Batman Returns, Batman Forever, and Adventures of Batman and Robin. Any recommendations out of these or any others that exist? I never played any of them. Thanks. Uh, the first reply, avoid forever, but play the other two. They're pretty solid overall. <laughs> yeah. So complete box in this game is forty four ninety seven. It peaked at forty nine fourteen or forty nine ninety nine back in May of twenty fourteen. It's trending up based on uh, today's trends. A loose copy will run you at eight sixty four. That peaked at ten fifty nine February of twenty twenty two. It also is trending up for some strange ass reason. Uh, yeah. So. You know, I find it interesting that, you know, it's sitting at 864 right now. So maybe people got smart. They picked up the game at 1050 and are like, mm, no, we're going to sell it back to the market. But it came in droves and drove the price down. Yeah, this is one of those games that I will say, uh, you know, falls into one of those categories of thinking for me that might be misleading. But this really feels like a game for a Batman person. You know, not a regular gamer. Like, if you're a Batman fanatic and you collect Batman stuff, I mean, good on you. You can get this game complete in box for 45 bucks. Like, I'm sure that that's a decent piece for a Batman collection, I suppose. I would think so. You know, so, I mean, if you're looking for just a fun Super Nintendo game, avoid. Yeah. Yeah, definitely worth avoiding. <laughs> All right, the next game that we played here, uh, and you know, we should probably go into developer and all that good stuff. First oh, wait, are we here. saying that's just right? Uh, oh, you want to do that too? Yeah. Um, uh, inflated for me. Inflated? Yeah, dude. Like, I think 860 is too much. Yeah, I mean, if I saw it for five bucks, I might pick it up to add to the collection, but. All right, inflated it is. Yeah, you don't have to push me too hard. No, definitely not going to pay that much money for that game. Um,. Okay, next is Space Ace. And so let's go really quick into the developer and all that stuff. 
So uh, developed by Advanced Microcomputer Systems, uh, so AMS, uh, published by Cinematronics, and it was designed by Don Bluff, who I have met in person, actually. Uh, interesting guy. And uh, it was released in 1994. It is a top-down action game. Reception is not good. So diving into this one, you know, I've played Space Ace, I've played Dragon's Lair um, in the past, but I've played them on the arcade in a cabinet. Where they were meant to be played on to be giant played. laser discs. It, exactly. So hold on, let me drink my water. Yeah, this is a, a terrible port, is what we would call it. I would think so. So... Um, Not even a port. Like, it's a whole different game. Like, what these games are known for is Don Bluth, incredible animation, beautiful, gorgeous, you know, takes all your quarters because it's just that kind of a game, but you want to see that next awesome animation. You don't get any of that in this version. No, and, I mean, you do get some of the animation, I think, but it's not... It's toned down. It's... Huh? It's toned down. It's yeah, not yeah, like the sure. real animation. Yeah, if you're not familiar with like these particular games, I mean, when you're in the arcade, the idea is you have your joystick and you move it in the direction you need to move it in. So if you're going down a tunnel and there's two tunnels and one has rocks and one is open, you're going to move the joystick to the left, right? This is totally different. This takes it into like a platforming type of style, uh, but includes like this ridiculous, difficult setting in which... You know, we play, God, it took us forever just to get past the first area because we had this enemy shooting a laser at us, I guess the main, you know, big baddie in the game. And he's shooting a laser at us, and um, if you get caught in that, you start over, right? Or if you die in one other particular area, you start over from the beginning. You got to go through it. So it's a, a pattern type game, which is fine, except there were instances where, like, it was just extremely difficult. Uh, one of them was we had those like sharp spikes that were coming from those robots going down and you had to like gauge it just right. Like if you didn't hit it in the first attempt that you were supposed to hit it, you had no shot of passing it because the screen was moving at the same time. And if you died on that, you had to start back all the way from the beginning. So it was, you know, not necessarily that it was, it was difficult, but it's not necessarily the difficulty that got me on this. It was more so the annoyance of a lack of checkpoints when you got past some of those difficult areas that really kind of frustrated me. Yeah, uh, with this title. It's a very like almost like a cinematic platformer in a way where, you know, you're not reacting and doing things like I guess like not in real time like Mario, like you're not running around jumping, dodging obstacles and stuff like there's something deliberately scripted happening that there is an intended one right way to do it with perfect timing. And if you don't meet that criteria, you try again until you reach that point. Like we just did the first level over and over and over again. All right, I got to wait. All right, run to the left. Go up. All right, wait. Run to the left. Down. You know, just that over and over. Like in my mind sitting here, I can still remember exactly where I went <laughs> for like the first like five minutes of the game. And, you know, it's... It's its own kind of genre. Some people get down for this. I'm sure that this is somebody's bag of tea, um, but not me, man. I, I would have much rather played, you know, the gorgeous original the way that it was meant to be, but it just doesn't work on that hardware. So we're kind of stuck with where we're at. Yeah, I would say visually the game at least was still kind of pretty to an extent. Yeah, you know? they did the and, best with what they had. And it controlled decently. Like, it wasn't like it was poor controls or anything. I just kind of go back to my situation being that it just, you know, it was frustrating. It was downright frustrating and just, in my mind, isn't worth playing if you're not going to have fun with it. Like, yeah, it's definitely one of those genres where... Some of those old games, I just don't want to sit down and deal with playing the game because it's not giving me what I want out of playing a game. Yeah, exactly. So uh, let's see. Complete in box on this one. $49.97. It peaked at $49.97 in May of 2022. So this month. It is holding at that price point. Uh, loose $17.49. Also at its peak right now in May of 2022. And it is also, tr actually, this one's trending up for a loose copy. Um, you know, seventeen forty nine for this game is quite a bit of money. Uh, I don't think it's as bad as Batman. I'll say that. Uh, because of the fact that it, it at least is palatable. 
in what you're playing. Like it, it seems like there's a little like, even though we weren't exactly having the best of times, we kept playing because we I didn't want to, to play this one more than the Batman one because at least getting past something was like. It was a rewarding challenge. It wasn't like a, a... Yeah. And once you get that pattern knocked down, we're like, okay, cool. We dodge here. We stay in here. All right, we're going to move. We're going to bounce in this area. We'll jump to this part of the level. Like, you know, once you kind of got that down, it was fine. Um, but it was frustrating. And, uh, you know, while I would consider it probably one of the worst games in Super Nintendo, I don't think it was nearly as bad. Would I pay seventeen forty nine for this game? No, I would not. I think this is one of those games where if you wanted to, like, have a particular set of skills, you could get this game, get really good at it, and be very impressive to other people. Because, like, I'm sure that playing this game the right way through, if you know everything to do, I'm sure it looks pretty good. Like, once you make some progress, like, there's the ability to, like, you're supposed to be able to zap up and turn into, like, Super Dude. But I don't think we ever really figured out how to do that. But, um, you know, it might have some of those animation qualities and some of those things that are visually impressive to see done. And then you hand the controller to somebody and they realize how freaking hard it is. And you're like, yeah, that took some work. Yeah. Yeah, I would say for this one, man, 10 bucks, you know, because for it, like what you said, you know, there's if you continue playing this is if you hone into your craft on this game. Pick it know, up if you're a streamer yeah stream this game stream this one well i mean dude there's people play those mario hacks that are like ridiculous i'm sure perfect for this um yeah i think this is a game that if you found it for 10 bucks um it would be worth annoying the hell out of yourself to try and progress into the game that's where i would be so i would still say this is you know inflated but not as bad find any other version if you can if you want to play the game find another version Go to an arcade. That's that's the best bet. In fact, we should go to Star Fighters to beat this one. We should. All right. The next game that we have on our list here is uh, <laughs> Revolution X. Uh, I never even heard of this yeah, before. I, I didn't realize it was Aerosmith until we started playing. Uh, but this was developed by Rage Software. They did the ports and then Software Creations. Originally developed by Midway for the arcade. Gotcha. Uh, which would make sense. Uh, it was published by Acclaim. It was designed by George Petro and uh, Jack Hager. Uh, it was released in 1994. It is a rail shooter. And the reception on here is a five. And we don't know how it is a five. Like, yeah, I just don't get it. It's, well, so IGN gave uh, the PlayStation version a one. Hyper gave the... SNES a 62 and EGM gave the SNES like a 4.8. I mean, for the most part, like five is being kind of generous, I think. Um, but yeah, e even at that, it's like, well, I wow. Mean, based on those three scores, you said a 62, which would be a 60 out of 100 or like a six out of 10, right? Mm -hmm. A five out of 10 and a one. So realistically the score is around a four on average for those three yeah i guess i guess maybe i brought the average up with my estimates a little too much though so it's not a good game it's like we said it's a rail shooter starring and sort of about aerosmith yeah so apparently there's like this new world order i don't remember the exact name of them but they kidnap the band members of aerosmith because you know that's how you get it, America. You got to kidnap America's sweethearts and, and Aerosmith. And actually, aren't they like Canadian or something? I don't know, dude. I, I don't follow Aerosmith at all. Yeah, I don't know much about Steven Here, Tyler in the game. Before I piss some people off, let's look up Aerosmith. Um, I mean, it wouldn't be bad if they're Canadian. Uh, they are an American rock group. So um, based out of Boston, Massachusetts, I personally just only know Dream On. And I think that's it. So, yeah. We... Not, not a big Aerosmith fan. Um so yeah, basically they get kidnapped by this like New World Order, and your goal is to try and save the members of Aerosmith. And uh, you shoot, ran, it's a rail shooter, so you're shooting God knows what because they don't show what the hell we're in. And uh, you can launch platinum albums. Yeah, it was also weird. Like I've never played a rail shooter where you're shooting like out of the bottom corners of the screen. Like distinctly, you and I were shooting like diagonally in from the bottom corners yeah which was a little odd and we were shooting like paintballs they looked like and 
platinum records. <laughs> you know, I kind of like shooting from the bottom corner though because it does allow for more screen space that you don't have like that distracting like sprite kind of in the middle of the screen. Mm -hmm. So I do I do like the idea of in the, you know, bottom left corner or bottom right corner in your instance. Um, the platinum albums was interesting, but you know, we got through quite a bit of this and there got to a point where we were battling like a helicopter. I and think we were was. just looped. It, yeah. I don't know what was like, if we weren't doing something right or what it was like, we didn't really Google it. Cause at that point we'd had enough, but I think I died and ran out of CDs to shoot. Well, and what's crazy. And every is, time like, you died, you got like more, more CD. CDs. <laughs> yeah. More platinum albums coming my way. So like at some point I had like 800 albums. It felt like, and I just kept launching these things, this helicopter and it was smoking and on fire, but it wouldn't go down. Yeah. And like, we were just stuck in this progressive loop and like we threw platinum albums everywhere. We threw it at, you know, at the actual, um, propeller, the propeller aspect directly at its body at like where the missiles were coming out. We were shooting missiles. We were shooting windows, anything you could think of to destroy this helicopter. And we couldn't. And on top of that, we were firing at it like with our regular yeah. shooting. So I don't know what was up with that, man, but, um, and we just couldn't progress. Uh, so it kind of locked us out. So, I mean, that in itself is kind of shitty. Yeah. Um, but look, I would say this is quite possibly the worst game that I have ever played, and I could not stop laughing. The yeah. Platinum albums were probably the most hilarious thing. It, it just had terrible controls. Like, The problem is there's no light gun support. This was an arcade, like, gun con type game. Yeah. And they brought it to SNES with no light gun support. I, th I think they brought it to every console with no light gun support. Can you imagine if it did have some sort of light gun, though, how it difficult would just... it would be? I mean, well, so that's the thing, though. Like, this game actually got pretty decent reviews for its arcade version. Like, at the time, it was actually, like, a pretty well-developed game for them. Like, it got praise for its audio and specifically, like, rendering voices and stuff. Even on the SNES, it's supposed to be, like, a good quality version of rendering voice on SNES. So... You know, it didn't do everything wrong, but like playing, we played uh, that vampire game without the the gun cons, and like that was like fine because it was like a PS2 game and it had more going on. But like, you need the gimmick for a gimmick based game to work and be successful. There's just like Aerosmith couldn't couldn't carry this, and I also think that it was around the time Aerosmith Guitar Hero that that. Genre started going downhill too. I don't think anybody. Not saying that this Aerosmith man. kills genres, but you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm actually trying to look at the members right now because I'm kind of curious if any of them are Canadian now. Um, but apparently, they're all from the Northeast, except for uh, was it Ray Tabano here? Um, no, no, he's uh, from New York as well. It was uh, Tom Hamilton's from Colorado, and then everybody else apparently is from the Northeast. Very interesting. There you go, your Aerosmith fun facts for the week. Yeah. Uh, and your other fun fact for the week is do not buy this game. <laughs> At least on the SNES. If you find a, an actual arcade cabinet, it might be worth it. But I wonder how many of those are still out there. I don't know. I wonder if Aerosmith has one. They probably do. Why wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> Playing our game. Um, let's see. What else on this one? You know, next time we go to Starfighters, we should see if they have this. Otherwise, I'll see if Galloping Ghost has it next time I'm in Chicago. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool to like, you know, report back on how good the game is on an arcade cab. Uh, all right, man. So let's look at some brass tacks. Complete in box, thirty dollars. It is at its peak right now, and it's holding. Uh, loose, eight seventy nine, and uh, it peaked at nine eighty one this year. Trending down, <laughs> like how you put where it belongs. <laughs> yep. Uh, you know what, man? This isn't even a five dollar game for me. Yeah, this one is... This is a, I found it for $2 at a yard sale, and that's if I'm even willing to pay $2 for this game. Now, whereas before I said many times, if you're a, a very big collector of the theme, go ahead and pick it up. But honestly, if you're an Aerosmith fan, I think that this will lessen Aerosmith for you. So I would not advise you buy this. Look, it lessened Aerosmith so much for me, I thought they were Canadian. Like... <laughs> And not to say that it's lesser because it's Canada, but, you know, they're supposed to be... No offense to our Canadian or Aerosmith listeners. Yeah, but, like, they, they're supposed to be, like, America's band, right? So, which I didn't know this, apparently, because I just don't follow them. But, you know, I, I thought they were Canadian. It brought it down that bad, Ryan, that I put them I in a whole other nation. I kicked yeah. them out of our country because of you this You think game. it was some other band or something. I don't know, man. I listen to so many bands nowadays. 
Like it's insane. There's bands I listen to that uh, I'll just I'm midway. Like uh, what's the uh, don't electric me. electric callboy? I don't even know who that is. Okay, so it's this metal band, and like when I'm listening to, them, I'm like, wow, they're really good. Turns out they're German. I'm like, that's random. Okay, yeah, I know some K-pop. I know a little bit about K-pop. If you guys like K-pop, uh, there's a really good K-pop store in Arizona. Amper fan. Amper fan. Well, K-pop shop is what you guys have it as. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they sell online, too. Yeah, that's true. Find your K-pop memorabilia there. Okay, let's do uh, from worst to really worst. We're going to put them on the podium. Worstest and worster, sir. So, I love Worcestershire. Yeah, that's, you know what, then in that case, we can't say Worcestershire for first here. All right, so we're going to start from um, uh, probably out of the three, like, the ones that we think are better out of these, and then the worst one will be top of the podium. I, I mean, definitely, I think we both can agree Space Ace is probably the best out of these three games. Yeah, I would agree with you on that. It's just, you know... At the time, I really didn't think so, though. Well, yeah, but then you start digging into, like, all of this and yeah. kind of figuring out all the information like okay yeah it's definitely better out of the three yeah i would agree i think it takes um the bottom of the podium here for worst snes games and obviously there's probably worse snes games than what we played this past week but uh yeah I, I think i think that one's number three uh i think you would probably agree that um you know no surprises here. We'll just say what number one is, and that'll fall into number two. You know, that's usually how you announce it, right? Yeah. So uh, I would think number one is Revolution X. For sure. I think for sure, for man. For sure. Like, it, it takes the top, and then obviously uh, second place here um, in terms of worst is going to go to Batman Forever. Batman Forever. I, I just, Forever in second place. I can't get over the fact that we got stuck in like this loop scene, you know, like on the Revolution X game. And, you know, maybe there was a way to get out of it, but it wasn't like obvious right we were shooting everything we possibly could and nothing was working we we're hitting select start um all of the trigger but like any possible trigger any shot you could take we did it and nothing was working and that's gonna be frustrating man like if you're a little kid back then and you picked this up you're not gonna play it after that yeah you're just done and it's not like you can just youtube it yeah back in the early 90s like that's you probably just, can't youtube it now probably not <laughs> there's probably nobody wants to play it yeah. I think that the biggest failure here, um, I mean, and Space Ace falls into this category too, where like these were decent to good arcade games. Like these were arcade games that were definitely leading the pack at the time that they were out in mm -hmm. what they were doing. Yeah. And they just tried to put them on a console that just wasn't at all able to handle that and give that, you know, experience. Like, the Space Ace definitely is a whole different experience, which I think kind of saves it. I think having a different experience as opposed to just a really low-quality experience of the other one, that might have been worse. But the fact that you're playing a light gun game and you can't use the light gun and that just makes it dumb and suck, like... It wasn't worth the time that they did and like all the money that they probably had to spend licensing Aerosmith out again and re-releasing it there. Like I would be interested to see if this like even came out or sold well at all in any other countries. Because like if we don't even know where Aerosmith is from, like what does some kid in Japan have a chance? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that's so sad to think that, you know. I, I realistically, I only know like two of their songs, I think, because I just, you know, like when Aerosmith Rock Band came out, my brother bought it or not Rock Band, sorry, Aerosmith Guitar Hero. Uh, my brother bought that and he was a huge Guitar Hero fan and yeah. he just wanted to play like whatever he could every time. Like it was the most annoying rock, or uh, Guitar Hero that I've ever heard him play like. He would play like songs I didn't like on like the other Guitar Hero games, but the Aerosmith one it was like every single one was like just bad. Yeah, it's just it's not it's not a band I like, and so to play a game and kind of go into it blindly because that it truly was a let's it's listed as one of the worst games. Let's go into let's it find blind out. and find out, and we we're just like nope. <laughs> so yeah, um, to talk a little bit more, I guess about Batman. You know, I definitely think that. Um, it was fairly close with uh, Space Ace um, in really just kind of the graphics, I guess, and that the fact that it was easier to play, uh, despite you know all of its flaws, it was an easier game to play than Space Ace. But um, 
I think it's just the fact that we lost interest so quick. Like, of all three of these games, that one was probably the one we stood the most chance of getting the farthest in. And it just wasn't. There. We just weren't compelled to. Like, we probably could have like gone on and you know done an extra level or something, but like it just wasn't compelling enough at all to even really want to try. Yeah. You know what sucks is this now opens me up for purchasing more terrible games. No. Because we're gonna want to do like another one of these for like PlayStation One and now John, we can just change that title from worst to best. That's true, but do I own the best Super Nintendo games? Probably. Probably. Can I put them on my PC? Maybe. <laughs> we'll try that if we need to go that route. Um, all right, man. Well, as you heard, worst is Revolution X, followed by Batman Forever, followed by Space Ace, as far as our top three are concerned. In go this, get you some Space Ace. Go get Space Ace. And it's a uh, triple threat throwdown. Um, I think you rated all of these, right? So they were all listed as inflated. Yep. I think that might be a first. Um, yeah. Good let stuff. Us, let us know if you like this format. We're not exactly sure when we're going to put it out there, but we're always trying to do some new stuff, and we like alliteration. So, Well, by the time this episode comes out, I think this is a, a backlog for, like, October. So you're probably listening to this in October or some other time frame right now. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, yeah, if that's the <laughs> month. Or Merry Christmas. I don't know when it's coming out. Uh, or Happy Thanksgiving. You know, Happy Holidays. Happy Holidays. From, from the Game Deflators. From the Game Deflators, whenever this is coming out. Now we got, like, we have to release this on like a holiday weekend now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Uh, as uh, we said, this has been a new episode of Game Deflators Podcast. My name is John. I'm Ryan. And thanks for listening. <laughs>